Hey guys, Tyra up here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my tournament games that happened over the weekend. First off though, we want to talk a bit about the tournament format. It was top 16, I ended up getting seeded 10th I believe, so I was up against the Angry Dutchman in the first round. I think, you know, with more time maybe I could have grinded like two more ranking positions, but I don't think that would have helped me out too much, because... Uh, then I would have been probably up against Referro, who's you know, maybe like a tiny bit weaker than the Angry Dutchman, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. And then if I did win that first round, then I'd be up against Love Nest. <laughs> so being up against Orange Pest, you know, if I did make it through the first round would be ideal. So that was good. So yeah, overall my seating is fine. No real complaints about that. Then we'll talk about the uh, tournament format. You know, we're playing on the uh, Master League map rotations. So that was uh, Nexus Master League, which is basically the same as the uh, auto match version. Same story for Amelie Fields, just a few very minor tweaks on those two maps. Uh, Mill Road, a few more changes, but honestly very, very similar still to the uh, auto match version. And then there is uh, Crossroads Master League somewhere. This is way different to the uh, auto match version, way different. And uh, same story with Feynmanville, also very, very different. So, you know, I did in my preparation play quite a few matches on these two maps, but uh, they didn't go too well. You can see I got 10 games in on that, seven in on there. Just, I couldn't really reconcile the differences between the auto match and I felt like, especially with Angry Dutchman having played a few Master League tournaments, he probably has a lot more experience than me on those two maps. So my plan was to uh, veto those maps, especially Crossroads. I felt that, uh, I feel like Crossroads, like in the center of Crossroads, you know, you got the heavy cover walls, you got those two buildings, got a little bit more heavy cover close to the center as well during the early stages. That I feel that that's quite advantageous to Soviets with the flamethrower and being able to merge in. You know, you can like move through all those cover positions, like inch your way forward to keep the flamer going. And you can really like control the center of the map very effectively. So with me playing Brits, who, you know, unless I pick Mobile Assault, don't have flamethrowers. I feel like that was to my advantage not to have crossroads. Even though overall, apart from that, you know, I feel like Brits do play pretty well on that map, but feel like, yeah, it was to the advantage of Soviets too much, so I didn't want to play on that. Whereas uh, Fameville, like, that that has some strengths as Brits. I feel like this is probably the easiest map of their whole rotation to put a mortar pit down on. But yeah, I just felt, I just didn't feel comfortable playing on that map, the way that, like, a few of the angles change and the covers have been reworked. Uh, yeah, I just didn't feel comfortable on Fameville, so that's why I didn't want that which was fine because the way that the vetoes worked out the last two maps remaining were nexus and emily fields and i had the uh last veto so i chose to go on emily fields and uh emily fields you know it's a fine map you know i played a few maps uh, a few games on crossroads i mean on nexus rather played quite a few games on nexus in the lead up in the last like maybe four days coming up to our games and I just didn't feel that comfortable using the universal carrier on that map felt like there were quite a lot of places where a squad could hide around a corner and you couldn't really use the universal carrier that effectively so that's why I favored Emily Fields over Nexus felt like it was a stronger map for the universal carrier so you get a stronger start even though I feel maybe Emily Fields is quite quite tough for mortar pit positioning. There's no real like good safe location to put your mortar pit down on. That's how I feel at least. Maybe uh but same probably same story for Nexus. I mean you can maybe set up a really good camp in the center of the map, but I think that's a bit too hard. So yeah, that's how the uh, early early uh, veto process went, and that's how we end up on Emily Fields. In terms of the uh, rest of the tournament format. You get to veto one ally commander and one axis commander. Unfortunately, I feel like this is a uh, pretty disadvantageous to like the Western Front armies. You know, you don't have very many commanders. 
you know, I think Soviets have like maybe three times as many commanders as this. Close to it. More than more than double. So get, getting one of your commanders removed, especially as the Brits, is like quite rough. Same story for like, you know, USF and OKW. So I feel like, you know, one commander veto is definitely to the advantage of the Eastern Front armies, which are already like the strongest and the most often picked. So I would, for me, I'd probably go for like one, if you're going to do it this style, like one veto for Eastern Front, two vetoes for Western Front. I mean, uh, you know, the other way around. Only one Western Front commander can get vetoed. But I think the... Uh, whole thing is just like kind of ambiguous you know maybe you just want to nerf that one commander it's not specific to the armies so there's a bit of uncertainty going in as to what's getting picked but everybody knew i was going to play brits so there's no real uncertainty <laughs> about that so yeah uh, the angry dutchman vetoed uh, lenny's assault which is you know definitely top three commanders for brits especially you, you know you can get off to like a very 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 strong start with this commander with the assault sections they have a very good capping speed so you can cap up the map very quickly and uh, if the engagements go right for you you can just have an overwhelming start with this commander so you can really kind of just bum rush your opponent off the map and then you have the quad to, to kind of lean back on you know Brits usually don't get an anti-infantry light vehicle so having the quad even though you know it can arrive a little bit late at three command points they can be very strong and you can double up the light vehicles sometimes if you want to go AC and quad can be like a very powerful early game strategy and then these days you know has the uh, planes the loiter in the late game which also makes it a lot better in the late game so uh, yeah he vetoed that which you know is I think probably the most popular in terms of tournament playing you know, I think we saw Twisted Tootsie use this a couple of times and maybe Jibber use this as well so for Brit commanders this is probably number one and this is where like it's to the disadvantage of me playing Brits because, you know, my Brit strategies are so different. So, uh, you know, when it comes to the veto system, you know, if I veto, say, guard motor, sure, you know, they then they have, like, two other options if they want to go for T3485s. So, and then, like, two other options if they want to go for guards. So vetoing one commander doesn't really massively change your tactics as soviets and it's the same story for us there you know you veto jaeger uh jaeger infantry then they can go storm if they want the jaeger command squad and uh ambush camo stuff like that so the vetoes definitely uh hurt me a lot more so coming into this i had to practice i was practicing three strategies which makes it you know a lot harder to refine one build to be like razor razor sharp because the veto system is such a disadvantage to me as the brit player so yeah one of the strategies was lean lease assault you know i did practice some mobile assault coming in as well as also practicing a lot of special weapons i did a little bit of uh tactical support as well but decided against it wasn't well practiced enough in that so this was probably my like second strongest option special weapons so, uh, yeah, that's the uh, veto system. Uh, yeah, so I vetoed Overwatch because uh, uh, it's it's pretty tough going up against Jaeger Lights and their planes. Sometimes there's Brits with this strategy, so I uh, wanted to make sure. And the Angry Dutchman, I think, from like, he's definitely top 10 as OKW. I don't know what his rank is at the moment, but somewhere in there for a ladder very high rank as OKW so I was like oh well whatever you know uh, because nerfing Overwatch is so strong which will kind of negate OKW altogether you know it's kind of what I was talking about with the uh, East, the Western Front's having disadvantage sure you can still go for scavenge but it's just nowhere near the power level really so yeah that's why I went for the veto of uh, Overwatch so it just kind of nullifies OKW altogether which I felt would maybe uh, be good for me when playing this commander. For my Axis, he vetoed a Jaeger Infantry, which is fair enough. I think this is still like the number one 1v1 commander. And it was definitely in my rotation. So my commander loadout after that becomes Storm. 
to still have access to the ambush training, the Jaeger command squad, because it's such a strong option and to be able to uh, lock in. Blitzkrieg, you know, this one's got the Panzer Tactician, the Recon Plane, and the Stuka Close Air Support. It's also a very strong option. And then Spearhead, again, Panzer Tactician, Recon Plane. This time it's a different endgame. Frag Bombs and Tiger Tank. can be pretty hard to stall for a Tiger Tank in these uh, high-level 1v1 games, but the Frag Bombs being dropped on Soviet team weapons can be very powerful. I did practice Spearhead quite a lot leading up to the tournament and uh, with the Mortar Half-Track as well. But what I found was Mortar Half-Track wasn't giving me quite enough value for the fuel cost and it was kind of delaying my medium tank and wasn't doing enough damage overall. So that's kind of where I was landing on it. I like it in theory, but in practice, the Mortar Half-Track wasn't quite working out for me. For my veto of his allies, I just went for the tried and true guard motor you know, the heavy mod does receive a couple nerfs in the Master Leap mod, so this definitely weakens the commander. But even after that, it's still such a strong option. T3485 is such a powerhouse. So easy to keep alive in these tournament games against the double anti tank guns, which are very common. Got the guards, which are just, I think, a little bit too strong ever since they got that uh, reduction in their aim time. I feel like guards have been slightly overperforming. Heavy mortar, which... You know, speculating even after the nerfs, maybe still quite a strong option. The uh, vehicle crew appears also just very versatile. And then, of course, mark vehicle, a powerful option, especially up against the heavier targets. So, yeah, I, I was just like, whatever, I just don't want to deal with that. So just get rid of it. And uh, that's what exactly what I did. So the stage is set. We're on Amelie Fields. I'm going to be playing Axis first. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are on Amelie Field. You want to try build your T1 tech structures close to the front here as possible. So if you want to reinforce from around here, after retreating your team weapons or anti-tank guns mainly, you can do so uh, quite cleanly. MG first, 15 manpower late there on my first green there. Not the best, but you can see this map basically identical. Get a little bit of wire off on this, because, you know, if somebody does come to harass this, they can generally have one or two models in here while light cover on the rest. So you want to wire that off. I don't think it's like that strong. I don't intend to really be harassed all the way down here. So building heavy cover, I feel, is not really worth uh, the extra time it takes to build compared to just capping that standard territory point. So that's why I didn't build a uh, piece of heavy cover there on this map. I, I don't think it's worth that extra couple of seconds delay. Now I did see these sectors flashing early on. So this green here initially came out to here, but I saw those sectors flashing on the tactical map. So I was like, okay, let's go and try and make a move down my side. I'll bring my green here across to support, get my machine gun set up around here somewhere. I might have even heard the sandbags building. Sandbags down on the fuel like this, so that whenever you come from this angle, as you will be attacking, if they're trying to attack, they can't make any use of those sandbags. So a uh, good engagement there for me with my MG42, getting the suppression going, is trying to do some chat or something, maybe he wasn't paying close enough attention. Get suppressed. He's got two squads, you know, it's thinking about wrapping around with the green ears to flank the squad, but with the other conscript back there, it doesn't really work out. Once again, I'm a little bit late on my green ear. About 30 manpower. Not a huge deal, but these things all do matter. He's coming out from this position, going for my cutoff, I'm guessing. So I'm pushing him now. Seeing this squad out to continue capping the munis. He's got two squads over here now. Green has got a nice heavy cover. Bring in my machine gun. Expecting uh, it should be close to being able to win this. So he does actually disengage. Going to go for the cap over here. I should probably be putting some sandbags up while I'm doing this. But my APMs, you know, not the best. So <laughs> forget about that sometimes. I've got a nice position here and this is exactly what I was talking about he does harass my cutoff but 
He has to move a lot further to get into the light cover afterwards. So I do quite well in that. This combat engine has kind of come around the corner unexpectedly on me. They're hidden behind the sight blocker. It's a little bit slow switching targets, but I'm going to try to gun them down for as long as I can. And this... I do end up trying to put down some sandbags, but if I was earlier, they would have been up in time. And I probably could have completed the capture there. And I decide, you know, he's got a couple squads into my retreat path. I'm going to cut early so I don't get potentially wiped on retreat. He pops the flamethrower and he merged into these combat engineers, keeping them out here for a little bit longer. I set up my machine at a slightly awkward angle. And it just doesn't quite get the shot off in time, so I spin around now. In the meantime, my Green Deers were a little bit too clumped. They weren't that spread out, even though they were out in the open. I set up again. And again, the flame, it just doesn't quite shoot. It's just, just, just doesn't quite work out for me there. So that's really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. <laughs> So he managed to get a burst off on me there. And I barely do any damage to him in return. I think that's pretty bad RNG. Pies have to stay back to build tier 2. But this stage is kind of quite bad. You know, I've lost control of my fuel. This is going to impact my 2-2-2 timing. Generally, I'm more of a 3 green into a fast 2-2-2 style. And losing control of this and then losing control of my cutoff, even though I've harassed down this side of his fuel, means that my 2-2-2 timing is going to be delayed. This is ordinarily when you consider building a, another green deer or maybe a Gaga command squad. If you want to lock in, if you're playing ladder and you you know you have Jaeger infantry locked in, you're know, very close to two command points. This is probably when you consider going for Jaeger infantry and locking that in. That way as well, if you're a little bit low on munitions, it's one extra squad with upgrades that you don't need to buy. So the MG42 coming up, but uh, this is, I'm like right on the edge of sight. Like he was shooting at me, I wasn't able to shoot back. That does happen sometimes. Quite annoying. We managed to get the suppression, and I know the squad's here, so my machine gun can't hang around for too long at that angle. He's got a mine coming up back here. I think my retreat path is down this way, so the mine doesn't get the wipe on me. I didn't notice that mine going down though. And I haven't managed to upgrade sweepers yet. I did go, decide to go for the fourth green deer. So I want to keep my commander's options open. Didn't want to lock in for a Jaeger command squad with Storm. And there we go, a whole bunch of mines going off. And that definitely impacts your ability to push on the map. But I'm making a pretty good counter attack with my fourth green deer. I got the 2 2 2 in the build. Pretty much the exact timing in terms of fuel for that. Rifle Nate here to force him back a little bit. Could be an idea here for me to maybe upgrade sweepers on my pyros and head out to this side of the map because he did have combat engineers over there. You have to expect that maybe he's going to have some mines down, so maybe that's something I probably should have done there. We have a new scout car. And now I, I'm kind of hesitant to even go in here because I could lose my green ears to the mine. But I pushed him up very far forwards. He, however, has a very fast T70 in production. Like, extremely fast with his strong control after that machine gun. Play didn't work out for me against the Flamer squad. So by going for the fourth green deer, it does make my pack timing slow. I do have the pack build time bulletin, so it's less important. You can see this is definitely... Uh, a slow 2 2 2, and the way that things have worked out as well, I don't get to do any damage with it before that arrives. So I'm here crushing, opening up this heavy cover. And there we go. Got the uh, T70 there. I do have green ears nearby, so that's where I'm backing towards. Decides not to chase them any further. And the pack is in the build now. Pretty much exact timing in terms of manpower, so. Overall, I've been pretty happy with my build. Like, I am quite prone to just forgetting about my third green deer. <laughs> uh, sometimes, like, mistiming my 222 by a lot. So, 
overall, I felt like in terms of timings, I was doing pretty well this game for me. Sweep up that mine on the far side. Playing defensively with my 222 until the pack arrives. It's coming up, but it's not quite here yet. In the meantime, he's planting a bunch more mines. I think that's really one of the strong suits of Soviets. It doesn't really matter what commander you select, because you can always just spam mines. And it's always just a very strong option if you've got the APM for it, so... Yeah, it's a little bit annoying having to play against so many mines, and Soviets are very well suited to spam, spam mines, you know, the most popular build involving two combat engineers. allows them to spam mines at pretty much any timing and you know with one of the last patches combat engineers as well getting a repair speed bonus with the sweeper package that means anytime the vehicles take damage they're not off the map for as long as they used to be getting repaired so again that enables more mine spam see that I wasn't going to be able to get a attack round off there so didn't bother going for it This is a little bit risky running around with my 222 like this. There could be a Zis on the field. We see one's in production right now. Again, this is one of those scenarios where he can shoot at me. I can't shoot back at him. Very annoying how that sometimes works like at max range. But overall, his territory control has definitely been better than mine. Largely thanks to that machine gun positioning not quite working out in the early stages. So I'm at the phase of the game where you need to maybe consider ticking up, going for your next unit. In this case, I'm thinking I'm probably going to go for the mortar. I think it's just a strong option against Soviets. You can generally plant it around this area of the map, and it can just do damage throughout the game. Big damage from the TC, any of those two hits. No, only lost one model, so not a huge deal. And I managed to do some repairs while doing a lot of damage over there. Try to branch out, try to go for the cap up here, but T70 shutting that down. This is coming up now. Good MG angle here, however. Greed is nearby capping. Tries to URA in, but gets suppressed. And there's the Zis making its presence felt. Can now come up and Zis barrage this away. And my machine gun's very awkward. Look at that positioning. Extremely clumped up. This is really the strength of Soviets. You know, you build the Zist to counter the vehicles, but then it also just counters all of the machine guns as well. Pack stays in position though, forces back the T-70. Go for an attack round, and that one almost does connect. Lands well short on that attempt. Oof, that one again, very, very close. So he's kind of lucky. Odds on, one of those three shots would have scattered long and connected there. So he got away with it. There we go, gets hit again, so now the T-70 is out for a while. One, uh, probably should have one extra LMG right now, but upgrading on this squad. A little bit slow dodging this Molotov. Didn't notice it, I was controlling some other units at the time. Otherwise I would handily win this fight. But now I'm trying to set up a position where I can perhaps wipe him on retreat. I've moved my grenadiers into the retreat path. This is a little bit low still. Got the 222 coming in, two grenadiers here. I think this is really well set up by me. And there we go, first wipe of the game. I take it out, the conscripts going down. Got to watch for a Molotov here again. Mine coming up on my cutoff. But once again, I've been a little bit slow uh, reconnecting my fuel. It's got a bunch of tripwires down as well, so I have to send my sweepers out there first. I decided to go for a second machine gun, in fact. Okay, also a decent option to help uh, lock down the map. Second squad of Pi is also a good option, up against Soviets specifically, just because they do spam so many mines. Not ideal to take a uh, engine crit here. 
I know I'm, I'm safe against the T70 that's still out getting repaired up so I continue to fight with it but yeah with only one pyo taking in the engine trick like this does slow you down quite a lot with that 222 my pyos are on the complete other side of the map having done that sweeping so should have snipped this wire but it's uh you know can only do so much I did notice it now and I'm like oh I'll come sw snip it but then his conscripts are coming in, so it doesn't work out. Knocking out his sandbags with my pack does give away your pack positionings. Hearing it through, firing through the fog of war, so not ideal. End up retreating with this because uh, I need it to repair up my 2 2 and so I'm on the complete other side of the map, so give up that position. The second machine gun doing a good job through the center here, locking them out. So yeah, maybe I should have gone for a second pyre instead of the second machine gun, but it's uh, not a huge deal either way. But yeah, he does tech up. He's the first one to start production on medium tank T-34-76. Doesn't have any commanders with T-34-85s. So worth noting. He hasn't gone for any guards yet either. And uh, the manpower bleed has actually been like pretty good for me to this point. I wiped a squad and my, my bleed is like really, really strong. My LMG Grandies have been working well. So even though my territory control has been quite poor, my manpower bleed has actually been very strong. And that's kind of denied him the opportunity. I think ideally a Soviets playing like a vanilla style like this, you would have a max amount by now. But uh, whether I've worked the engagements, I've been very good on the manpower. It's got the T-70 on recon mode there, so... My uh, 2 2 actually getting outsighted by it right now, because I don't have VET-2 yet. And I get pretty lucky he misses both shots there. Gets suppression off, but I know he's probably going to Zis barrage me shortly. Rifle nade over the hedges. Didn't do as much damage as I was expecting. I, was, I didn't think I'd get the wipe, even though they were mega clumped up. But I was hoping for at least one more model than that. We go T34 coming in. Conscript's trying to get a bit of a flank going, but my machine gun reposition is very sharp. Pack getting good shot in here. T70 coming in, but ideally I'd want one more Grandia here right now. So right now I'm considering do I want to lock into a commander? I could maybe go for Spearhead or Blitzkrieg, pop smoke from the 222. And that would help me escape with my pack. But I do have reinforcements arriving, so I decide against it. Playing quite aggressively with my 222 to try and divert attention away from the pack. And it does end up working out. I also get a shot off with the pack and an engine crit, so both his vehicles temporarily immobilized. But once again, he does go for my cutoff. I think maybe this is kind of like a lazy play for me, just leaving my machine gun in the building over here, but I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for myself. Just uh, easier to play. So even though it's not ideal, you know, <laughs> I'm a mortal man. I just, I'm taking the easy route, all right? Rather just do that than make, you know, be too overstretched and make a catastrophic mistake. You know, during uh, later games in practice, I would probably get more involved, but during tournaments, I want to play a little bit more conservatively. Good tripwire in here from him. So you're going for some cheeky attack rounds. And I'm pretty quick on the attack rounds. This time I think it's worth going for the second one as well. Tried to target it a little bit more over to the left. But it ends up hitting the building. It's too far back anyway, most likely. So I get my Panzer IV out. And now I get the mortar. Pushing in. Green is nicely behind heavy cover. This is probably where I should have locked into a commander. I should have gone Storm. I could have been able to sprint in there, Faust, and knock out the T-34. So yeah, I think that was... Probably should have locked into Storm around this timing. I didn't. As this pushes in. My pack. Now this is my monumental blunder, honestly. I thought I'd decrew the, the uh, Zis a lot faster. I've been shooting at it with this Grandia. 
the entire time. But I just can't kill it. So I look at it. I rifle needed it as well. I didn't drop a single model. So I thought my Panzer IV would be able to come back in here. I might as well pause here because this is a lot to explain. And go for his T70. Maintain control of this. I had a couple squads nearby. I'd be able to recruit. it. But that, that Zis just doesn't die. And I think that's what makes Soviet so strong. You know, I had a Grenadier shooting at it for 20 seconds. I rifle needed it. I didn't. I dropped one model. One model. Any other anti-tank gun that was decrewed. But there's this. You know, especially coming from that angle. He's got the gun shield active. And that makes a pretty big difference. He definitely knows the impact of the gun shield. The LMGs just weren't doing as much as they could be. So... Yeah, this was my big mistake this game. I, I saw it happening as well, but I thought I thought I could decrew the Zis in time, but I just couldn't, and that means my Panzer IV can't safely come in and uh, save the day here. I probably should be coming in now, though. Looking to do some work. Maybe pushing up here with the, uh, with the uh, MG. These two Grenadiers are coming in. They're capping on the far side, but I'm bringing them in because the uh, action's getting a bit too hectic. So a little bit too far away to resupport, support And I just can't quite decrew it either. It gets very low on health. I'm bringing my Panzer IV around the side. But he's still got his anti-tank gun somewhat nearby. Panzer IV misses. Otherwise, I could easily kill the T-70. MG Grenadiers do get the decrew, but it's bringing his... Zis back in. Stop for max accuracy, get the kill, but here comes the T-34. My Panzer IV is backing away, and everything penetrates, everything lands, and I die. And the pack's still firmly on his side of the map. T-34 gets a nasty hit on my Grandi as I lose the squad. That main gun hit, devastating. So that was a huge, huge blow. to get a Faust off on this so I can Faust it again to get the engine crit. I did knock out his combat engineers at least. But yeah, that was just a monumental swing against me. Like, I think odds on, you know, my, my Panzer IV probably could have survived there. I had a squad near enough that I could uh, Faust. That's, this is where I locked into Storm as well so I could get the sprint into Faust working. But yeah. Pushing up ultimately with that pack, a terrible idea, all because I couldn't decrew the Zis in time with the LMG Grandier firing the rifle nade. So yeah, that uh, did not go well for me at all, now I'm way behind, rebuilding the pack, close to the fuel for another Panzer IV. He has been pretty diligent about harassing my munitions though, I definitely uh, haven't been the best in terms of munitions control so far. I only have the one Pioneer still as well, which can make it tough when you're up against so many mines. But at least at the moment I don't have any vehicles to repair, so they are pretty free to run about the map. And I'm way behind on VPs as well, even though, as I was saying, my VP, uh, my bleed has been very strong to this point. My VP control has been quite poor. And late game Soviets, extremely hard to deal with. I tried bringing my pack in from this angle, but I probably should have just left it over here so it's not getting any damage done. And these squads come out of suppression very, very quickly. My pack facing an awkward angle right now. I don't have any green deers super nearby. The squad coming in with the sprint, spin around with the pack, pack fires. He's is trying to get in range for the Faust, but they can't quite do it. Allowing up for some attack rounds. Get a good shot in there while he accidentally stopped. Hoping for the miracle, but no dice. <clears throat> so he's still hurting in terms of manpower. He's you know, managed to rebuild his combat engineers. He's recruited my pack and reinforced that back up to full. But because of that, he's a little bit low on manpower. He could go for another tank, but you can see he's locked into mechanized support, and he's going to stall for this ISU 152. This can, thing can be really a handful to deal with. Uh, it's quite strong through the center of this map as well, I think. 
And if you've got a whole bunch of mines down, it can be very hard to flank. I think for me, you know, I did lock into this commander to get the sprint into Faust to open up some options against his T-34. Try and save my situation earlier. But I think ideally I would want uh, Blitzkrieg if I'm up against this commander. To bring in the planes, I think you really need the X factor of these two close air support planes to help you against the ISU-152. Panzer IV rebuilt now, but one tank down does give him a lot of breathing room. He's going to use that to try and start his stall. There go, good shot in there from my thing. I get, get this very low with my uh, mortar. He's actually very lucky that he didn't get decrewed here. Extremely lucky. But that's those six-man weapon teams, you know, they're so strong. I get very lucky there with that last shot from the Panzer IV. Just, that was incredibly lucky, not going to lie. So I've rebuilt myself back into a pretty decent position here. But again, I think my uh, lack of a second pyo is really hurting me right now. Because coming forwards when I've run over so many mines, it just feels so dangerous pushing in without another squad to sweep with. So it definitely needs to be high on my priorities list at the moment. And this is again where leaving this machine gun in the building is starting to hurt me now. We should be bringing it in maybe from this side. Trying to box him out off this VP as well. This is also me. Because I've locked into a commander, like, I don't think the Stuka dive bomb is that good in 1v1. Players are too good at dodging it. So this is where I start to use, like, green, green D med kits and stuff a bit more because I don't have a big off map that I want to be saving my munitions for. So if you take a lot of damage on your green deers, and maintain map control and you don't have like a strong late game off map, especially if you're down to just one pile like this, you don't have time to plant telemines with it. That's a uh, good option. Got big damage from the double AT guns. The pack is relatively nearby though. To continue to do work. 10 kills. I've been very active with it. I think that's one thing I, I'm pretty good at. Just constantly retargeting the mortar, moving it up, moving it back. I uh, feel pretty happy with my mortar play overall. And there we go. That's what I was talking about. Green med kits that are coming in from the side. I didn't want to push over all the way over here, expose myself on a long retreat, and perhaps run over a mine. So. That's why I'm not pushing in onto his fuel point. Plus, I figure, like, his fuel control's been so good to this point. I don't think me denying his fuel really has much of an impact than I could probably do with the fuel myself. All firing positions mode for the guards. He's barraging that before he even moved into the circle. But I more didn't get too much damage done. Almost none. Just really bad scatter on it with that barrage. Much more mines down. It's got the uh, AT gun ambush as well, so camouflaged up. But yeah, finally got my second pyo. Just preparing up back here. Capping up. I've, I've managed to stabilize and I'm in a pretty good position right now, but that's before this ISU starts to arrive. So come in here, look to apply some bleed as he caps on the far flank. I feel like I can't really contest this at the moment, so I'm kind of. This is, this is what I've got. And I can't really push any further than this with the Panzer IV. I get a Telemine down here out the back. Telemine over here, so pretty common paths if he's going to do some flanking maneuvers. And I actually don't know what commander he's got at the moment. I'm pretty bad at just remembering what commanders people have in their loadouts. No, it's a commander with guards and marked vehicle, but at the moment I forgot. And now I'm like, oh shit, it's the ISU. I figured it probably was at this point. About maybe uh, about two minutes ago, I was like, okay, he's definitely saving for something here. Tried to push that retreat to the absolute limit. You never want to be in range to take two shots from the ISU. Basically, green med kit's being used again. 
This is where, again, locking into Storm late is kind of costing me. I think ideally I would want to have another uh, Jaeger Command Squad right now to have the Flares as an option. Because the Flares from this are very strong, but they only come at Vet 1, which I didn't remember. So at this stage, I kind of need a second anti-tank gun. I have a, a few options. I think I've already, yeah, I've already ticked Battle Phase 3. I was kind of committing to going for uh, Tier 4, play the long game. Because up against double anti-tank guns, set up like this, it's very, very hard to play a mass medium tank strategy. And in the meantime, he's, he's very focused on the center, so I'm capping up the far sides. It is here, soft retreating, trying to get my modder do some heavy lifting. The ISU just blasting me through the center continuously, but it's not dropping too many models. Do you remember that guards PTRSs have 42 and a half range when they're in that firing positions mode, so they can outrange any infantry. I'm trying to play evasively, trying to hide behind these sight and shot blockers as much as possible. you starting to get quite aggressive pushing through the center now at the moment it's i'm slightly out of his sight range but i can see him thanks to my uh pyo squad having 42 sight range so i'm trying to manipulate that at the moment take advantage of the pyo sight range i come in when we attack here so i know his tanks there but no i can't push any further he's got the double anti tank guns go for a tank ground almost the mark vehicle just to make sure I don't dive in after him there. And I start the mortar fire on him. So yeah, so far, you know, definitely I feel like overall I've played pretty strongly, but struggling on the VP control and that that pack and first Panzer four loss really set me back a huge amount to allow him to get this ISU. Good use of uh, the target weak point here. That's me get quite a lot of damage on the ISU. Gets quite a lot of vet on my pack as well. Tries to go for some return fire on me. Sprint in, looking for the Fausts. Not quite able to close in in time though. Right, back, quite far back for the repairs. Actually, the day before this, I played a game where I was repairing a little bit close to the front lines while the Mark vehicle plane was still active and it ended up biting me quite badly. So, playing it a little bit more conservatively to make up for that. I know at this stage, like, I have to take a little bit of risk because I'm getting too low on the VPs. So, I'm trying to branch out to the sides, even though I know I'm going to get chased away by the T 34. Just retreat early because I can't really play very effectively through the center up against the ISU. I got a good hit with my Panzer IV just then. I could have maybe got the wipe on him, but it doesn't end up working out that way. Come out to the side with my sweepers, but now C's got the uh, heavy cover back there, which makes it a bit awkward for me. Got the AT gun there as well. Wanting to repair while I'm on the uh, cutoff. This brings ISU across. And my Panther's about to pop out. Ouch. A Panther has arrived from the fatherland. I've arrived and I'd have been barraging this with my mortar, but the sandbags, they make this squad so durable. Don't even take half health off with like three mortar shells and a rifle nade. But yeah, I decided to go for a Jaeger command squad now as well. Because I'm like, man, I really want those flares. Really, really want those flares. But then no, not the lock behind Vet 1. So I have to get this Jaeger command squad to Vet 1 to try and get the flares going. Buy some smoke through the center just to uh, check what's going on a little bit. Maybe wall off his anti-tank guns from being able to fire efficiently. A little bit close to my Panzer IV. Pinching in with my pack. So yeah, knowing that I was up against 
perhaps I'm not for you to live plane again. Knowing that I have to get VET 1, maybe it would have been better for me to go for a second anti tank gun instead of this Jaeger command squad here. Let's go the uh, AT gun there. Off the smoke on that. Trying to do as much damage to that ISU as I can. Are still repairing up. Got a big wall of grandies here though. Pushing in. Got this a little bit awkward with my positioning. Wanted to bring it across here, but a little bit slow doing that. Stunted to Faust. Not quite working out. The mortar actually uh, kills his mine there. Drive in. But I don't quite have sight of this, and I end up taking the engine crew on the Panther. That's a little bit clumsy. It's going to slow me down a lot. I should have been bringing in my Panzer IV at this stage, but I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now. My pack is uh, off the field, trying to heal up. I'm just getting blasted out by this ISU. But looking at this now, I can see he doesn't have as many mines as I was imagining, honestly. He's got like one here, just not that many apart from that though. But given how many I've run over and swept, I was imagining there would be a lot more mines than this. Horribly for me. I'm missing and bouncing all my shots. Taking a huge amount of damage in return. So this is looking really grim for me. I finally bring the MG out of the building, but for some reason it runs out of the circle and the enemy is taking our territory. But here we go, it's coming in. I'm bringing in my Yag command squad as well from this angle. Maybe seeing what I can find, but his anti-tank guns are camouflaged, so I don't see them over there. If I did see them, maybe I'd play a little bit differently. But yeah, hidden, you know, not a huge benefit, but he's working it nicely this game. Water getting a couple decent hits over there, but I'm really struggling on the VP control. A lot of time off taking repairs. Coming up here though, Panther bouncing, got my pack there. That connects, trying to sweep this mine. Panther advancing now, but look at it, look. He's got an SU-85 arriving just as I'm starting to make this move. Uh-oh. I don't notice the SU-85 initially. And I'm like, oh shit, he's got an SU-85 back there. Abort mission, abort mission. Oh no, I've got to just try flank him. There we go. I'm not vet one, and somehow my parving gets stuck there. So... Ends up getting the shot through, so that was a big throw from me. I'm focused over here though, you can see the Angry Dutchman maybe wasn't. And I get a kill on his T-34 because of it. So you can see why I wasn't paying full attention to my Panther, I was focused on here. Maybe the Dutchman was focused over there. Probably ends up being better for him in the trades overall. So yeah, now without my Panther, um, I'm up shit creek, honestly. Playing pretty well here, dodging away from his shots. Firing off some attack rounds with my pack. Is this your 85 coming around the corner now? Good damage from my mortar on his AT gun, but. Yeah, overall, I feel like the repairs on my pyre is a little bit slow. Maybe I should have been a bit more active for trying to go for double. Uh, Double pyre repairs, try to sprint in for the Faust, and there we go, get some damage on that. It's going to slow down his ISU for quite a long time. I to push in this side with my pyos, do some sweeping. A little bit inactive in the center at the moment. He hears my Panzer IV mobilizing from this side. Backs away with his SU-85, he's got his pack back there as well. Going for some attack grounds, got the sweepers up. I hold my position here, trying to get the kill, but unfortunately my Panzerfall misses the kill shot. It takes some big damage from the marked vehicle as well. Second pie's pushed all the way up here. Maybe out of position for the repairs. I'm 
So at this stage, I'm like, shit. You know, I'm so low on VPs now, I just can't afford to save up for another Panther. I'm gonna go for the Stug. It's desperation stations, this one. The Stug is, uh... Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work out. It's, but, uh, you know, I felt like I'm... Going for another pack, I felt like it wasn't gonna be mobile enough. I felt like I needed to have something that could be active and maybe push and finish something off. Because I, I feel like unless I get a vehicle kill, I uh, can't win this game right now. And anti-tank guns, though, they're less likely to die because of the SU-85 being able to counter the Stug. They're also less likely to be able to get a kill. So, you know, maybe if I had an extra... 150 VPs to work with, a second anti-tank gun would be a better option, but because I'm so low on VPs, I decided to opt for the Stug. And it gets off to a horror show of a start, ac 85 pushed quite far forward, it's got the guards there as well. And again, my repair woes continue. Dodge away from the Molotov, <laughs> he threw it where I was and then I dodged away from where I dodged to. Do manage to stop the decap though, that's very important. Dodge off to the side, still take a lot of damage from the grenade though. This was coming forwards, but the pack's over here. Should take some damage to try to bring it across. So he sees an opportunity now. I'm firing off some smoke. I'm expecting the pack or EC-85 to be back there. Don't manage to suppress them there on that burst. I've got my pack in a decent position. My machine gun's not set up at the moment. Don't have sight of him currently. This is where the flares will be just so useful on the Jaeger Command Squad doing some long range spotting. Make it so much easier for me to position all my units. But unfortunately, uh, still, still off the field. So. Um, bullies. Take an engine crit here, so. This is kind of a bit of a setup play by me. I'm hoping that he's actually going to push in. Because I've got that Teller mine there that I planted. But he's got the advantage of having the SU-85 with focus sights. And uh, my Stug is just not working out for me. I nearly killed that T-34. I think his repairs actually saved it. It does end up going down to my pack eventually though. And I'm coming around the side. I'm popping the smoke. He dropped the planes. On my pack, I tried to dodge away from them to the side, but he brought them in from the side, which I wasn't expecting. So my pack is hanging on by an absolute thread right now. My machine gun also got suppressed, so I can't fire back at the guards. He's coming in with his SU-85. I've got my Stug here, but I'm uh, bouncing and missing. I'm bouncing and missing. He's bringing the ISU around from the side. My pack sets up at an awkward angle, and then I miss again, and I bounce again. But here we go, finally connect on the SU-85, my pack lines up the target weak point, stunning. Here we go, connecting. He's brought his pack forwards though. Good shots so far on the ISU. But miss, miss bounce. Stug dies. Connects, one shot. ISU survives. 15 VPs left, he's got me on the triple cap, ISU's still alive. Can't, can't bring it back. So yeah, pretty close game overall, even though the VP score maybe doesn't look that way. Uh, as I was saying, I think the my main, my main mistake this game, I feel, was when I pushed up here with my pack, expecting that I could decrew the Zis in a timely manner, so then I could push him with my Panzer IV and get some damage done. But what actually happened, T70 decrewed me extremely fast. I couldn't decrew the Zis, even after, you know, shooting at it for such a long time with that green deer and rifle nading it. And that's really like, ultimately why Soviets 
one of the large reasons why Soviets are so strong in these tournament games. You know, you get your anti-tank gun out of position with them and it just doesn't matter because you've got so much more leeway with that six-man crew, especially if the gun shield is facing the right direction, which it was in that case. Uh, very, very hard to decrew. But yeah, I was definitely feeling the heat in the late game, just very, uh, very overwhelmed on the VP pressure. That ISU is such a menace to deal with. Nearly got done. Bit of a throw with the Panther as well. That SU-85 arriving at such a bad timing for me. But yeah, that's how it went. So yeah, that was the uh, first game in the series. Overall, I feel pretty happy with the way I played. Uh, uh, yeah, apart from that pack move. I feel like I got a little bit hard done by in that first tank engagement. I think there was a pretty high chance of my Panzer IV surviving there. All of his shots connected and penetrated, so he ended up dying. Not like, you know, it wasn't absurdly unlucky or anything. It was just, I think, mildly unlucky. And that set me back at like a really tough timing. It was when I started to make my comeback and I was bleeding him real, real hard. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with my mortar play, my grenadier play. Probably should have got a second pile earlier for the sweeping for the repairs. Uh, but apart from that, pretty good. Probably should have locked into Storm if I really wanted it as well. So I could have got the uh, sprint into Faust a little bit earlier. But uh, yeah, that was that was the tournament. Did make a couple of use of smoke bombs. M medium success. I'm trying to smoke out the uh, ISU. I think it would have been more successful if I could have maybe got like two tanks. Or maybe like three tanks together, done some smokes, diving in. Been a bit more aggressive that way and gone in for the kill. But it's pretty tough, as I was saying, when you're up against those double Soviet weapon teams, six-man weapon crews, unless you can force one of them off the field with like a mortar barrage or something, you know, I don't, it's very hard for me to afford to save up for a uh, Werfer if I want to also make a dive on the ISU. Uh, anything else I want to talk about? No, not really. I think that was about it. Yeah, you can see the Dutchman maybe has a little bit more uh, APM in these late game scenarios, finding time to you know plant sandbags, put down mines. But again, I think that's partially to, to do with I was talking about the Soviets getting the repair speed bonus in one of the last patches. It means that the combat engineers can be a lot more active planting mines. And yeah, looking like how it felt, how many mines he planted versus how many we actually see went down, it felt a lot more overwhelming dealing with the mines than uh, in reality how it actually was. So it just shows you the uh, mental toll that they can take, even though he didn't plant that many. I felt like if I had tried to make any aggressive play coming down this side of the map, I would have hit a mine, would have been lucky not to hit a mine. So we can see that that wasn't the case, but... Yeah, but yeah, pretty good uh, pack play from me, I feel, as well. Pretty happy with that. So yeah, I, I felt like this was within my range to win, but the the first losing, turning over that first pack and losing my first Panzer IV put me in such a bad position this game that I couldn't really uh, come back from that. So here we are for game two of the series, and I've decided to go for my special weapons regiment tactic. Basically, this involves boarding Royal Engineer first to do some capping, cap up this side of the map, and build a universal carrier to go and harass. The squad, meanwhile, goes up and caps as much as it can down this side. What do you need us to do? Basic plan is to uh, build two tank hunter infantry sections, uh, and maybe not have to use an anti tank gun. These things are secretly like very, very strong. So, uh, but it can be a bit awkward, you know, it does rely on you being at two command points to bring them in. Sometimes that can be a bit of a headache. So, that's the plan. Probably seen me uh, do this strategy in the past. Also plan to get a resupply half track. I was experimenting using the sniper a bit more with this strategy, but for my style I preferred just using the 
resupply half track as well as the universal carrier and uh putting a squad with two vickers inside it and running around and causing trouble so he tries to go for the wire off over here but obviously if you're up against the universal carrier it's not gonna do too much do remember the universal carrier very bad damage close range kind of got the lmg profile Get caught out here in a bad position. I just decide to cut my losses and get out of there. There's a machine gun back there. Suppressed me, so not much I can do. <clears throat> but yeah, I am locking him out from capping his own fuel. He's got a squad coming in from this side. Something you've got to be really careful about. A squad coming in from uh, the other side of a sight blocker, so you've got to be prepared. Too early in the game for a sprint into Faust yet though, so that's good. So I see him coming around the corner, he does have the Faust range bulletin, so I'm pretty quick to drive forwards into it. And this actually opens up an opportunity for me maybe to kill the Pyos, but probably not because the UC is so bad at firing on the move. I leave my Royal Engineers dealing with them over here. We have a fresh grenadier squad. Bit awkward. Another squad in here coming for some sight, so if there wasn't like another greedy coming in, I would see it coming. So you've got to go for the uh, double Royal Engineers with this strat, otherwise you don't have enough capping power and it can cause your <coughs> repairs on your universal carrier to be too slow if you don't have double Engineers. If you're using it like this aggressively, you can already see it's quite low in health. Meanwhile, I come into close range on this building, he's only got one window firing from here, so not too bad for the Royal Engineers. Now it enables me to capture this. Kind of fighting on the side with the Universal Carrier here. <coughs> Excuse me. Decide to back out. There could be a Green Air coming in. Already quite low on health, just not worth the risk. Got two squads retreating, so should be able to appear back at base shortly, so just get out of there. So overall, decent start for me. You know, that push up from him with the machine gun on the side definitely catching me off guard and sending me, send me back a little bit. And I think at one stage I cancelled the Vickers K. Now I'll uh, re buy it because I realised that my universe carrier is going to survive. So, the plan at this stage is to go for the assault officer. And I did see his machine gun back there, which is why I don't charge in with my officer. I try to bring it. I'm going to go for a full wrap around the side. But yeah, I have to take quite a lot of time off I repair this. So you can see the impact, you know, if I only had one engineer, it would mean even longer off the map. And look at how much map control he has on the back of this. Bit of a nightmare. There we go, coming in on the flank. We managed to decap this at least. Now my universal carrier's got the upgrade, so he is going to get me roasted. Squad coming in from the side as well. So do remember that Royal Engineers do have a capture speed bonus. So ideally the way you divvy things up is you do more capping with the Royal Engineers because especially when they're just these three model Royal Engineers, their combat strength is not that good. And then uh, do some more fighting with everything else. You can see we're getting to the time where given his map control, he could have a 2-2-2 coming in maybe in like 20 seconds ish time and we're still not there for two command points so i'm deciding to build an anti-tank gun at this stage and so i can defend my universal carrier i'm also getting a bunch of mines down this is actually one of the differences on this map there's a little bit of heavy cover on this side of the wall if you don't wire it off you know a lot of players like to wire this entire thing off which does make it harder to harass but i like to move my anti-tank gun through here quite a bit so I don't know. I typically don't do that. It's got a telemine down here. And this is a bit of an issue, you know, between the mines I'm getting down and the universal carrier upgrade. I actually don't have my slightly poor map control. I don't have enough munitions for sweepers on my Royal Engineers at the moment. So this is a uh, telemine's going to be a problem. <laughs> Just letting you know now. The enemy is attempting so I'm trying to hide that I have the uh, anti-tank gun. You know, a lot of times I've been doing this build, I haven't been building anti-tank gun, so I, I imagine the Angry Dutchman has watched those games. So he's not expecting me to have an anti-tank gun. And 
that's packed right here. He's like completely let go of the map while all this is going on, while he's been like, healing up at his med bunker, building his stuff. He's got his pyros back here. But they can't quite see my anti tank gun. Fly swords with the 222. One shot, slow to react. Second shot, please. So that is really good news for me. I did take a lot of damage on this. That's a lot of repairs, but wow. First 222 dead. It's looking really sharp for me. I'm still going to build the tank under sections because I'm expecting him to rebuild the 22, which he is doing so. And tank under sections, uh, you know, it's kind of like a two-pronged attempt then. You've got your six-pounder and your tank under sections to deal with the 222. And they can do well against non-LMG upgraded grenadiers. In fact, they'll, they'll handily beat them, so... The earlier you get them, the earlier you can start vesting them up. One of the real issues with them is they can sometimes be a bit, obviously, coming at two command points, slow to vet. So that can cause you some issues. And uh, you can see he's locked into Jaeger infantry, which I didn't veto. To plant a mine down there. He suspects it, but he doesn't quite get the angle right on his attack round attempts. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. So it doesn't really work out. And I've got my squad behind the heavy cover over here. Camped out. Not sure I'm killing a sandbag, that's what I'm doing. Rifle nade, but no dodge from me. If it's just one squad, I'll be able to hold my ground, but two, unable to. Pop the uh, suppression on this. Oh, yeah, he's got this AG command squad over here, so. Let's see how much damage. My officer takes on the way in. Threw a grenade slightly back, I was expecting him to dodge into. Maybe I catch him off guard like that. Losing a, capture point. a lot of damage here, but not quite enough to kill, unfortunately. And in the meantime, he's capping up all the flanks. Got a lot of units back here at base. And here we go, bringing in the half track but because my map control has been a little bit lackluster I'm a little bit low on munitions combined with those mines so uh, I only have enough for like basically one Vickers usually you have enough for two at this stage so it's really bad slow on the dodge so it's had to retreat from that unfortunately threatening the anti-tank grenade here catch him with it T-gun's nearby but I'm going to try to push it through the center, bring in my universal carry as well. Anti tank gun going to line up for a shot here. Connects. Now I'm going to try to finish the job with my universal carrier. It's on the rear armor. If this was on the front, I probably wouldn't attempt it, but on the rear, I get the job done. Now I see this grenadier into my retreat path, so I'm trying to dodge forwards of that. But it's a little bit clumsy with all the uh, haystacks around. End up taking the Faust. So that's going to be the end of my universal carrier, but had a pretty good run. Did a decent amount of damage, you saw hit, hitting Vet 3, killing his uh, double 222s. Two, two, Six pound has to get out of there now. But yeah, once again, my map control has been a little bit lackluster. So we're really relying on this M3 to help turn things around. And because now we're at like the 10 minute mark, I'm not expecting another 222, so it should allow my half track to be very, very strong. The problem with the Brit half track is it's very slow. Just, oh, so slow. This thing is a turd in terms of move speed. It doesn't get the speed boost like the USF half track either, so uh, you just have to be prepared for that, especially up against a commander like Jaeger Infantry, the sprint into Faust. Uh, it does make it a bit tough. And this is where really having the second Vickers is helpful. It allows you to stay at range and do a lot of damage. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. Oh, more damage at least than I am currently. Ideally, I, I generally do prefer uh, from the officer in compared to a compared to like this infantry section double equipped with them. Because you have better white potential when you're chasing down these squads on the flanks and stuff. But uh, obviously in this scenario where I'm trying to keep my range it's tough. You can see he's aware that he's got that mine there, so I think he's trying to bait me over it. Fortunately, half trick doesn't quite come far enough for us to do damage over here. My T-gun nearly got decrewed in the center, by the way, to that machine gun. 
And this is where me not having a sweeper, me being low on munitions is really coming back to bite me. Got a sweep on this. I'd probably be away laughing right now. But we're moments away from disaster here, chat. Oh, not then. There we go. So no speed boost, remember I'm hit one, no speed boost. There it goes. And that's really bad. It dying there, that is really bad. Because this is, you know, I've only got one Vickers equipped so far. If I had double Vickers on this, double Vickers on this, I could, I could, to I could tolerate that. I could handle that, but because I don't have enough weapons distributed now, I am in some deep, deep shit. Not enough that I would consider rebuilding it though. I don't think it's worth the rebuild. Though maybe it is. You know, I think one of the issues with playing Brits is that, you know, I've got all these strategies and they're pretty good, but as I was saying, I have to split my time between a lot of different builds. The builds are so different. Uh, so refining all the builds and knowing exactly what to do. It's like a one-man mission, you know, I don't have 30 other people playing exactly the same that I can learn from. So there's a few decisions that uh, I haven't managed to explore. And this is one of them, whether I should rebuild the half-track here. Because I do need some more weapons being equipped. And when it comes to defending the mortar pit, which I plan to build, having the half-track there for reinforcements is uh, very helpful. So... It's, it's tough. Maybe maybe I should build it um, after I get my tank out, which I'm, is going to be a centaur, by the way. So, because I'm low on anti-infantry at the moment, I don't have any Vickers, and I think the Cromwell kind of sucks, I'm going to build a centaur, and that is a uh, really, it's quite strong. Just gotta gotta be cautious with it since it can't really fight back against enemy tanks. But that's typically where this build can kind of excel, since you have so many more snares available with this build. That was very painful. But unfortunately, this squad goes down on retreat. Nasty. Managed to dodge that rifle nade. I thought he was rifle nading this building. I didn't realize he was in range of this, so I jumped out of the building. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's a big loss at that timing. You can see I've planted a whole bunch of mines down trying to prepare for this mortar pit. That's what you got to do. You got to plant a whole boatload of mines before you uh, get your mortar pit down. So here we go, Centaur coming out. And it's arriving at a good timing before his first medium tank, but you can see my map control is just so bad after losing the uh, half track. I'm really struggling at fighting on the flanks as Mortar's actually getting some pretty good hits in as well. Doesn't have any kills, but it's doing a lot of health damage. So this is really unfortunate. I could have got the wipe on this. But didn't quite line up that way. I think only one squad, one model of the squad went down to the mine. So that could have been a, a squad wipe. And if that had been a squad wipe, I'd be right back in this game. But because I've, uh, yeah, not idea. So he's got his Panther 4 in the build now. He's quite late on it, but he did, you know, lose those double 2 2 2, so it definitely slowed him down a bit. <clears throat> Finally hit Vet on this, so I got the extra model, which helps out a lot. I'm getting my mod pit down now. I think this is probably my most critical mistake this game. Building the mortar pit so far forwards. I think I should have built it like maybe back here a bit further. But that's again another thing that, you know, because so few players actually play Brits, the best mortar pit positionings 
uh, not very well known. We have 300 points remaining. So I think this was, you know, it's kind of good because it's got like some sight blockers around here, but it's just too easy to push to here with your anti-tank guns and then shoot at it. So I need to make it a little bit more painful, a little bit further back. And I'm starting to get a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. You can see I'm not on the right side of cover over here, so I can't really mount an effective defense. But my plan from here is to go for a uh, stall. A crocodile stall. Because it helps out a lot. There we go. This is why I was talking about the mines. Very helpful. Got the anti-tank gun coming across. I'm expecting his anti-tank gun to be back here, so I've got to be cautious with my centaur. Got some tech rounds there. Not quite working out. But yeah, the Vickers is just so bad as a machine gun. It's another issue. I kind of went for a Vickers to boost up my defenses here. Assist me in the long range, but... Uh, not reliable enough. Decide to drive in here. So if I take one Faust, whatever. Probably should have stopped here for max accuracy. Maybe could have dropped another two models. But try and continue. continue. Vickers coming across here, man. Just suppress first burst. Mortar pit coming down for some good damage as well. So here, I'm feeling confident enough that I can go for the store. But mm, doing these mortar pit defenses is tough. I'm trying to barrage his AT gun at the moment, but hits are not really there. There's mortar already up to VET 2 now. So in this stage, like maybe I should have just gone for a Cromwell and use use the uh, mortar pit to just leverage as leverage and with the extra defenses from the Cromwell I could really overwhelm him here but you know these once again this is you know build order that I'm kind of making myself so just kind of fine decisions about exactly what to do in each scenario and not well uh not well defined. So he already gets this to low health with his uh, mortar barraging it. Now he's dropping the light artillery barrage on it as well. So I'm a little bit slow activating the brace. Now he's on the charge. My AT gun's off the map. And this is where the Cromwell would really help me in the defense. My heavy cover gets blown up here fast. Maybe I should have popped some smoke down here honestly. He jumps back on the mortar, which I barrage with my mortar, but don't quite manage to decrew it. And it's actually very, very painful for me. You can see here, it lands a big hit on my engineers trying to keep this healthy. If I had managed to decrew that again or force it away, this could have been a hold on this mortar, but I'd say. But yeah, with this officer, I probably should have dropped some smoke down here as well. Mistake, and in the meantime, he's still capping up on the flanks. And there we go, my mortar's dead. He's building a second uh, tank. And yeah, I've invested my resources into uh, the anvil. So, in case you're thinking, oh, he couldn't even build a second Cromwell, what was he even talking about? No, I've spent 50 fuel on that, so could have got a Cromwell. And that probably would have been the right choice. So, yeah. I think in this case, you know, maybe you either go for like a second anti-tank gun. No mortar pit stall that way. That way you can really contain the Panzer IV a bit more effectively. Or you do what I did. But instead of taking Anvil, you go for Cromwell. Lean on the mortar pit to do the heavy lifting. And then... Uh, Look at these hits from that mortar, dude. Enemy forces going off. Our territory. And yeah, let the mortar pit doing the heavy lifting. So it's a little bit further back now. I rebuild it, but now he's got the second Panzer IV out. And I've been continuously losing control of my fuel. So the crocodile store has really just gone completely off the rails here. 
So, yeah. Heavy mortar. Ready and waiting. So at this stage, good time to build a second anti-tank gun. Enemy causing trouble. Trying to take one of our points. Drop some base out so far, hoping they'll decrease mortar again, but doesn't manage to. Now he's popping these flares above the trees, so it's giving him a lot of vision. It's making it very, very difficult for me. I decided to come in here, try to kill off this the grenade. So, I'm a little bit slow. I should have queued up retreat immediately after that. I didn't. And it gets killed by the mortar on retreat. How bad luck is that, dude? That is so unlucky. I was fuming after that. Got the second anti-tank gun in the build now. A little bit slow though, I probably should have built this about 30 seconds ago. And now I'm really under the pump again. You see the Vickers taking a little bit too long to suppress there. And now my second mortar pit's in some big trouble as well. He's very close to a couple of these mines. I got my anti-tank gun in here, popping the brace. He's recruited the mortar again. Got the second Panzer IV in here. And this is where the Centaur is like, I'd say worse than the Panzer IV. Uh, Fast Panzer? This, this penetration, I think, is like 20 to 30 ish. So, against the front armor of a Panzer IV, you just do shit all, man. It's really bad. Even against the rear armor, it's quite bad. So, yeah, now after the second mortar pit d down, I'm, I'm pretty much fucked. And as, as well as my officer dying to the uh, mortar on retreat. So, yeah. Overall, quite promising, but unfortunately that Talon mine really just screwed me over hard after I had such a strong start. And then perhaps making a slight build mistake, maybe building my mortar pit too far forwards. Maybe I should have gone for the second anti-tank gun earlier. Maybe I should have gone for the Cromwell. But yeah, it's, it's not a very well-trodden path, this build order. And uh, it's kind of just, you know... It's not like I have hundreds of tournament games from the last four years doing basically the exact same build that the Angry Dutchman's doing now to uh, lean on for what to do in each different scenario depending on the game situation. So I decided to make a push down this side. I know there's units all over here so why not? Because we just suppress. Here we go. Hit some mine. I got my double anti tank guns nearby, but he's got two tanks coming in. So, this is where I make like a sign misclick or something. I thought I double snared this, but you can see that no snares came out. You do have to remember that all engineers have their snares on a different button to every other unit in the game. So, maybe I hit the wrong button. Against the rear armor of the Panzer IV, I can do okay, so I'm chasing him down. Meanwhile, this anti-tank gun trying to finish the job, but doesn't quite manage to do so. He's brought his pack up. And look at that, I don't quite manage to get the kill. Even against the rear armor, I can't penetrate enough. And I can't manage to get the kill here either. So yeah, that was a complete collapse for me, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, missing the snares, just very, very costly there. And because the uh, Centaur is so bad damage, I couldn't even kill the Panzer IV on the rear armor. And I was hoping here I could come in, kill his pack, and then kill this Panzer IV, and then maybe I could do something from there, but he had that third Panzer IV coming in, and that completely shut me down. So yeah, that was how the Brits went. As I was saying, I think I played like a very good early game. Uh, I was really happy with that. I killed those double 2 2 I had very good anti-tank gun positioning. But yeah, losing my half-track before I could distribute all the weapons meant that I was kind of struggling against the LMG Grenadiers for the rest of the game. Uh, and then yeah, I talked about this at length, but Mortar Pit maybe should have been further back, supported by a Cromwell. And I think I could have made, made the hold. Made, this, made the stall. I probably would have lost one of my medium tanks at some stage, but they would have opened up some more uh, room in my pop cap because Brits often have some pop cap issues when you're close to 100 for the crocodile later on. So yeah, unfortunate, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I played overall. 
think uh, both of these games were well within my uh, abilities to win. But yeah, you can you can see the big disadvantage of playing Brits. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to make all these build orders myself, and you know, it's tough. Like, you know, I don't play crazy amounts of games, so trying to figure out you know at these in these high level games because you know playing ladder, it's a lot more breathing room, can affect your timings and stuff. But in these high level games, things are so much tighter. So knowing those exact decisions about what to do in each scenario is, uh, is harder to know. And uh, obviously, because all the builds are so, so different, you know, you know, I've got like four builds and they're all completely different. Uh, there's a lot more decision making to make than for uh, Soviets and Austria, where all the builds are basically the same, or well, unless you're going for like a tier one start, but we basically never see that. So yeah, unfortunate, but you know, as I said, happy with how I played. Uh, you know, in terms of my lead up practice, well, you know, I will stir some shit here. Uh, I think you know, Orange Pest was stronger than the Angry Dutchman, and uh, God is an astronaut also stronger than the Angry Dutchman. So that's that's how I feel having you know, played a lot against those guys uh, in the lead up to this. I think those two are stronger. But yeah, GG's and uh, hope you enjoyed these insights into how it all went down from my point of view. So unfortunately, I won't be one of the top four playing at GCS2, but I'm still going, obviously. And if you want to help contribute towards my airfares, you know, it's $2,000 New Zealand dollars just flying over there. Uh, donation links down below. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.